There's a lot of famous cartoons getting rebooted lately. And I mean, I'd already planned on doing this video because I had an idea I really liked for turning the Animaniacs into a mythical creature. Not that I can watch the new version of the show because Hulu doesn't exist in Canada. But anyway, then in the span of a week, we also got a Tom and Jerry movie trailer and a teaser for a live action Clifford the Big Red Dog. Throw in another idea I'd had for Squidward as a mythical creature and I had all four of my characters decided for me that I was gonna work with in this video. Didn't have to think too much about that. So it's the usual Popcross Studios thing of turning cool stuff into other cool stuff. I'm writing some lore and redesigning these famous cartoon characters into mythical creatures, mostly inspired by Greek mythology with a little bit of Romanian thrown in there. And yes, these creatures are all in the same universe as my dragons. Yes, I'm gonna do my usual thing of asking people to hit the like button to help with algorithm stuff. And yes, I'm gonna suggest that anyone who's not subscribed, subscribe and ring the bell, because I do two videos a week and maybe we can get to 250,000 subscribers by Christmas. Don't know if we will, but that would be really awesome. Anyway, no more delay, let's get into some creatures, shall we? Let's go! Now in nature, like with all things, there are sometimes anomalies. Unexpected outliers who deviate, sometimes drastically so, from the norm. The first creature we explore today is one of these anomalies. Zuberators are a species we've explored before, and while there are many types of these dragon wolf creatures, they are rarely larger than a dire bear, excluding their wingspan. But on the east coast of the Americas, a young woman discovered and raised a bright red zuberator that has grown to over 40 feet long. Explorers in the region who study beasts have found no explanation as to how the creature got so large compared to others of its kind. Not that its owner, Amelia Liz, has ever given them much of a chance to study the beast. Those in the region have taken to calling the creature the Colossal Crimson Zuberator, but apparently Amelia simply refers to it as Clifford. And while both the size and color of this beast are bizarre, so too is its relationship with Amelia. Zuberators are not frequently found to be friendly towards humans, but it seems as though Clifford has never once shown any animosity towards his owner. She has somehow domesticated what could have been the most dangerous creature in her region. Well, the Crimson Zuberator is a marvel to behold, you'll want to keep your distance as Amelia has taken to pirating, riding her Zuberator in and out of any situation with ease and with immense power to back her up. If she sees fit to rob you, you'll likely have no defense that could protect you from her big red brute. Now I was a little bit nervous about this Clifford drawing because he is just a big red dog. There's not a ton of stuff to pull from. So I was really happy when this started coming together in a really nice way. One thing that was kind of a last minute decision was adding in Amelia riding on top of him. Cause once I finished the core of the rough drawing, I realized there was nothing to really give us a scale of how big the creature was. And I felt like I needed something. So I threw her in on top. I didn't detail her quite as much as I maybe should have, but I think overall she does end up being a positive addition to the piece. She really does help inform the scale of the character. Another thing I was doing with this one was looking at anatomy images of the underside of wolf and dog's stomachs and belly area, because I realized that in the courses I'd done earlier when I was learning how to draw animals and creatures, they didn't really cover the underside of many four-legged creatures, so I didn't have a good idea of what the anatomy under there kind of looked like. So from referencing that for this, I feel like this is one of my best wolf-like creatures where we actually see its underbelly. Which I guess as I say that, that's a very specific thing, but I feel like it has come up a few times on this channel when I'm doing wolf dragon kinds of creatures. Anyway, I'm really happy with how this one turned out and I think it's a great start for the video. Hope you all like it too. Here's our Clifford Beast. Next, we see a beast who, luckily for us, rarely creeps up from the depths of the ocean. In the Mediterranean Sea, there is a certain breed of kraken that, well, not the largest of krakens, may be the grouchiest. The calamitous squid grows up to 200 feet from head to tentacle's end and sports a largely turquoise hide, with some orange shells protecting its torso. It only rises to the surface after an earthquake or other natural disaster has caused significant disruption to its home, at which point it will rise and wreak havoc on coastal towns. The creature has never been seen without a horrific 
angry scowl stretched across its semi-humanoid face. That, paired with its massive drooping nose and head sack, make it particularly unpleasant to gaze upon. There is only one thing that has been found to placate this creature, and that is the song of a well-played clarinet. Because of this, all coastal Greek towns make sure there is a musician on hand who can be called upon at a moment's notice to run to the pier and play their song and calm the rage of the calamitous squid. Now I'm not gonna lie, for the amount of time I spent on this one, I'm very surprised how well it turns out. I only spent about two and a half hours on it, and lately I'll usually spend three, sometimes a little bit more than three hours on each drawing. Like for example, my Mario as a Spider-Man villain drawing, which is pretty simple looking, that one took three hours too. So for this one to have taken two and a half hours, I was like, wow. This turned out really cool. And I think the thing that really makes this one is the depth, the tentacles coming towards us through that sort of laneway pathway that I made with the mountains that go in towards the character really make it feel like this creature is bigger, like it's off in the distance, but then the big tentacles are coming towards us. I think the composition and the way that I have the tentacles kind of sprawling all around just make this creature feel really big and menacing, and I'm just... I'm super happy with this one, especially for it only taking two and a half hours. For this drawing, I was referencing two different versions of the Kraken from both of the Clash of the Titans movie, the one from 1981 and the one from 2010. Both of those designs I really like, but the 2010 one, I remember that being one of the first movies I saw where I thought, wow, creature design must be a really awesome job and a really fun thing to do. And now it's one of the main things I get to do for my job. Anyway, I hope you all like this weird combination of Squidward as a Kraken. Here it is. Now this is usually the part of the video where I jump in and say the drawings in this episode, as well as tons of my other drawings, are available as posters in my Teespring store, which you can access via a little bar underneath this and all my other videos. But on top of that today, I want to say I'm expanding the range of products that I've got available on my online store. The most recent edition is I uploaded a bundle of 36 of my different inks. They've got no background in behind them, so you can take them into whatever software you want and practice your coloring on them. Or you can print them out and color them yourself. If people like that and want more, I'm definitely happy to make more bundles and maybe specific ones, like one for dragons or one for Mandalorians. But I'm also playing around with the idea of doing a bunch more types of t-shirts. I kind of want to do a Let's Go t-shirt, but I haven't decided on the design for it. Anyway, what I'm really saying is, besides the fact that you may want these posters and they're available on my online store, I am also expanding the stuff that I'm doing on there, so just keep an eye on my online store. Anyway, sorry for the longer interruption than usual, let's get back into the next two characters. Now, many arguments have been made about this next creature. Some believe that it's one of a kind, while others believe it to be one of a few in its species. Some also believe it to be the guardian of the underworld, as it has only ever been seen in the deepest depths of a particular Greek cave system. Its last sighting hadn't been for 22 years, but it recently seems to have emerged from wherever it was hiding. Until proven to be a species and not another anomalous creature, it is to be referred to as Cerberus the Manic. This three-headed monstrous hound is wildly unpredictable. Some have claimed it to be vicious and dangerous, while others claimed it to be playful and intelligent. Strangely, the creature seems to devour all of its food through only one of its three mouths. The middle head, which is distinct for the red tuft of fur on its head, does all the eating for the creature, and also has the most playful expression of the three, as its tongue is often found hanging out. The left head is considered by some to look more stereotypically female, as the fur on its head resembles that of the shape of a flower, though I consider this to be a stretch at best. The rightmost head doesn't have a distinguishing hair color, but does seem to be the head that steers the creature's decisions most. While the creature is famously unpredictable, many do consider it to be a good thing that it has remerged, as it predominantly eats trolls, and few people are opposed to a reduction in the world's troll population. Now I'll be honest, of all the characters I'm working with in this episode, well, this was the one that prompted the episode most. This is probably the character, or I guess set of characters, that I know the least well. I didn't really watch Animaniacs as a kid, and as I said, I haven't been able to watch the new series yet, so I just know a few token things from the clips I've watched. 
That didn't really make the drawing harder because I had the idea right off the bat for the drawing, but it did make writing the lore a little bit harder. I did a little bit of research, watched a few more clips from the new version of the show, but it was still a little bit tricky, and I wish I'd been able to work in some more puns and jokes and wordplay because I know that's an important part of Animaniacs, but obviously it's easier to do wordplay for the characters when I know the characters a little bit better. As for the drawing, I'm super happy with how the three heads came out, and that's obviously the part I was focusing on the most because that's the part people would be looking at the most. But you might be able to tell from this based on what I was saying earlier that I drew this character before I drew my Clifford one because I don't have the detail in the underbelly of the wolf-like anatomy on this character that I have on the Clifford drawing because I hadn't done that research yet. I drew the Clifford one last and did the research for that because his stomach was going to be a lot more prominent in the drawing. Anyway, we're coming down to the end here, so I hope you all like the finished result. Here's our Cerberus Animaniac. Our final beast of the day is a creature that is near constantly at odds with itself. Chimeras are not a rare species, and many different ones will have traits, limbs, and heads of various different animals, but this one in particular is a strange combination. Referred to as the contradictory chimera, this beast has the head and body of a dire jungle cat, but from the tip of its tail spouts another head of a mouse. This second smaller head seems to often cause great problems for the creature, a statement I'm sure many human males can relate to. You see, the contradictory chimera tends to try feeding largely on rodents, which seems to offend the creature's tail. Because of this, the tail will do what it can to throw off the creature while on the hunt, alerting prey of their presence and even sweeping itself under the legs to trip the chimera. The smaller head, in most cases, seems to be much more clever than the big one, a statement I'm sure human males cannot relate to, and this will often lead to the chimera reluctantly resorting to herbivorous food choices, as it will have a hard time making a meal of its desired prey. These heads are an odd pairing to be sure, but on the rare occasion when they are unified in their goals, they can accomplish great things. Now one thing you might notice on this one is I also end up giving it some like lizard kind of back legs. That was just because I felt like it was going to be a little bit too bland. I don't really have a good reason for why I threw that in there. I just was looking at other reference images of chimeras and saw that lots of them had some kind of lizardy dragon kind of parts and limbs or scales on them somewhere. So I kind of just threw that in. It doesn't really have any relation to Tom and Jerry. Because the drawing on this one was simpler, I did more of my practicing my fur rendering on this one. I also did that on the Animaniacs drawing. But as I've said probably too many times on the channel lately, fur rendering is something I've been working on lately and I really am liking the formula that I've found for it. One weird thing about this one is that I tried to render Tom's head as a bit more realistic of a tiger or lion kind of face, but then for Jerry I didn't really try to make him look like a real mouse, I just went with the cartoony kind of head, and that's because mouse heads are just... I don't know, they weren't really working for me when I was looking at reference images of them. I didn't feel like it was going to come across enough as Tom and Jerry if I did that, so I went with the cartoony head. I think that might make this piece a little bit weaker, but overall I'm still generally happy with how it turned out. Anyway, coming down to the end of the last drawing, I hope you all like it. Here's our Tom and Jerry Chimera. And there we have another Beasts episode all wrapped up. I mean, mythical creatures, but let's be honest, this is just another slight name variation on the same kind of concept I've done a bunch of different times. Although I feel it was kind of justified because I was pulling from some specific types of mythical creatures for this episode. Now one thing I've been wondering lately, I considered making a poll about it, but I guess I can just ask it at the end of the video here, is what kind of characters do people like best when I design and do for episodes? Do you like monsters, creatures, dragons, dinosaurs, or the Transformers, robots, biomechs, or the humanoid kinds of characters like superheroes? heroes and Mandalorians and stuff. I think those are the three main kinds of ones I do, but I don't know, let me know what your favorite kinds of videos are. I'm always gonna do a variety, but I'm curious what people like most. Anyway, if you are new to the channel, I've got tons of cool stuff as other cool stuff videos, and specifically lots of different beasts and monsters kinds of ones. 
I've done lots of episodes of turning different superheroes and characters into dragons. I've turned Ben 10 aliens into D&D monsters. I've turned famous video game characters into beasts. I'll link a whole playlist of these at the end of the video. But that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcross Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next video on Friday. Goodbye.